Hi, this is Andre. I want to talk about how you can have all of the Echoplex MIDI functions displayed in the piano roll of Ableton Live so that you can see all the functions as you're editing them. To start with, let's check this out. This is a very straightforward Ableton session with one MIDI channel. If you take a close look, there are no instruments on the MIDI channel. There are no effects on the MIDI channel. All there is is this one MIDI clip. Now, we have the MIDI output sent to, in my case, it's the Mio. The Mio is the USB MIDI interface. So if you're gonna send this to an EDP, you want this MIDI 2 to be set to whatever your audio interface is. You also wanna make sure that in the preferences, you have MIDI ports, output set to Mio, and that track is on. If you don't have track on and the output set to Mio, it's not going to work. So this is a clip that I have in here. I'm going to start up the EDP, and I'm going to start the Ableton clip. So the clip here has two functions. It has a half speed, full speed toggle, and it has a sus overdub. So playing Ableton, and you can see on the faceplate of the EDP, Every time this comes around, that toggles between half speed and full speed, that is a sus overdub. So one thing that can be a little frustrating about trying to program MIDI commands in a piano roll is that you have to keep looking at this thing, which is the list of MIDI commands in the Echoplex manual. And that's not a bad thing fundamentally, but it can be a little tricky to keep track of. So what I actually did was a little research and I found a way to assign each one of these function names to the piano roll. So long story short, I made what's called a MIDI effect rack, which I'm going to make available for free download, and I'm going to link to from this video and the description. On my computer, I have it here. It says Beta Echoplex Digital Pro MIDI Controls. I'm going to click and drag this over to the MIDI channel there. Release. Now we have that. And if we go back to the piano roll, haha. So now I'm going to play the clip again. And now you can see all of the possible Echoplex MIDI commands, including multiple loops, are now displayed on the piano roll. So if I want to change this from half speed to reverse, I move that up there, and now it's toggling between reverse and full speed. I can get rid of that, I can get rid of this. Let's say I want to add a sus unrounded insert. Let's do that. I'm gonna get rid of these two sus overdubs. And now you can see every time that those two things happen, it's expanding the length of the loop for however long these notes are because it's a sus unrounded insert. I'm going to stop the transport for a second. If this icon here, I think it's a headphone icon, if you click on that, then by clicking on either the piano keys here or the notes, you can actually access and send command functions without even having the transport operating. So that can be useful if you want to double check what your settings are, just to make sure that that is in fact record, that's overdub, that's front panel insert, whatever that may be set to, etc., etc. Next loop, blah, blah, blah. And let's reset all current loops, because we can do that very easily now. Reset all loops, boom, EDP is reset. Now there's a couple of very important disclaimers we need to talk about. First of all, the EDP needs some very particular settings for this to work. The first is control source needs to be set to note. If you set it to continuous controller, that means that note commands are not gonna trigger any functions. You're gonna have to use continuous controllers to trigger functions. You can do that. You can ostensibly do the same kinds of functions using continuous controllers. You can probably even create something like this for Ableton or other DAWs that will give you a list of all the available commands. Um, I have always used note commands for functions. I'm biased. I think it's better partially because the foot pedal I've been using since 2006, the Behringer FCB 1010, it only really works effectively for the EDP if you use node commands. I'm sure somebody could do continuous controllers and I leave it to that somebody to create their own tutorial on how to uh, set it up in a piano roll with labeled functions. Um, for me, I use note commands. I highly recommend you use note commands. If you want to use the Ableton MIDI effect rack that I've created, you need to use note commands. Sorry. Second thing to be careful of is that source number needs to be set to 36, which is the default value, and 
loop trigger needs to be set to 84, which is also the default. Here's why those need to be set to what they are. I'm going to start up a new loop from scratch. Just record. Come on, just record. We're going to get rid of all this silliness. We're going to come down to the front panel overdub. I'm going to put that in there. And now if I play the clip, you can see that it is toggling on and off overdub as we would expect. Now, I'm going to go in here, turn off overdub, I'm going to go in here, I'm going to change source number to 38. Long press gets us out of parameters, and if I press the MIDI clip again, nothing's happening. Why is nothing happening? Nothing is happening because we changed the source number. That means that all of these functions have now moved. So we have the headphone icon on, and if we want to figure out what's going on, if I click multiply, now that's triggering record. If I click insert, now that's triggering overdub. Why is that? Why are they offset by two notes? Because we changed the source number offset by two notes. So we have it set to 38. 36 is the default. Long press gets us back to default. So if we go back to 36, now everything is working as it should be. There's overdub, there's record. But if we change the source number, let's go back to 38, then everything here is gonna be offset by two MIDI notes. So now what was multiply is now record, what was insert is now overdub. Here's the good news. You can actually edit the MIDI rack if you need to change the source number so that it will work with the new stuff. Here is how we do that. Going over here, here is the front window for the MIDI rack. I'm going to hit the key button. I am going to scroll all the way down. Well, I am already all the way down. I'm going to select eighth sync out. That's the lowest possible command you have. I am then going to scroll down through all these functions until we get to these two empty ones. I'm going to hold down shift while I click on the empty one. That means that we have now selected all of these functions. What I'm gonna do now is grab any one of these and drag it two notes. So click one, two, and you can see that because we had everything selected there, all the notes moved at the same time. So now, if we go back over here, now, what happens? There is our overdub. There is our record. There is our multiply. There is our unrounded multiply because I ended multiply with record. So, if you do need to change the source number for some reason, and I know some people do, you can still use this MIDI effect rack, but you're going to have to change it. You're going to have to select all these. Now, here's another important thing. The loop trigger number has to do with what your starting note is for loop number one. I'm going to move everything back to default. Source number 36. Loop trigger is 84. And I'm going to delete this effect rack and reopen the OG version from the desktop. So drag this over. There we go. All right. If we open the clip again, I'm going to reset everything here. Boom. All right. We have the icon on here, which means that when we press a key, we will actually send MIDI. So that's loop one, loop two, loop three, loop four, etc., etc. And they use letter names for these higher ones, higher than nine. Now, the loop offset number by default is 84. That means that if we enter that, that will give us loop one, two, three. And as I start playing the clip now, you can see the EDP is switching through different loops because we're sending those different loop numbers. Now, just as changing the control source number will change where the table of MIDI commands begins, changing the loop trigger number will change where the different loop selection notes begins. So if we move this to 86, and then we replay our Ableton clip, now suddenly everything is kind of messed up. Now this is selecting loop one, 
because we moved everything up by two on the offset number. So here again, you can edit it if you need to. We're gonna go back to this, gonna open up the key button. <laughs> I'm not much of an Ableton expert as you've probably gathered. I'm gonna scroll down here until we get the loop numbers. I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna come down here, select all 16 loops, find them on the piano roll. Gonna move over here because I'm running out of Oh, I'm running out of screen space. No! All right, so that is loop one. Here we go, move it over two. One, two, come back up here. And now, this should give us loop one, loop two, loop three, loop four, yes. I personally have never changed either the source number or the loop trigger number. I've never had a reason to, and for me it just makes life easier if I keep those factory things at default. If you do need to change them, you can edit this MIDI rack like so. What I highly, highly, highly recommend you do after doing that is save it as a new thing. So come to the floppy disk icon, and you can name it anything you want to. Let's say offset MIDI beta, echoplex, blah, blah, blah. And then that will have all of the notes mapped according to your offset values. Now, one thing to, uh, to emphasize here, this doesn't give you any extra functionality. Everything we've been doing in the control sequencing videos, this you can do without this fancy pants MIDI effect rack. The only thing this does is allow you to see the list of function names displayed on the piano roll like this. If I get rid of the MIDI effect rack, if I totally delete it, and then we come back to that and we play it, you can see it's still changing stuff on the EDP. So we haven't gained or lost any functionality. What we've done is now we don't have the names of any of those functions. So for somebody like myself, it's a lot harder to actually look at the screen and figure out what's going on. But have no fear, you can either come to where you have it saved or you can drag it in. I'm gonna drag it in, drag it in there, and we are back. All right. So again, I find this really, really helpful just for being able to look at the piano roll and, and understand where all the functions are and being able to deal with them. As I say, make sure that if you're using it straight out of the box, that control source is set to note. Make sure that source number is set to 36. Make sure that loop trigger number is set to 84. And if you need to change either the source number or the loop trigger number, then make sure that you edit this MIDI effect rack in such a way that the names line up with the functions. Thank you so much. I will talk to you guys very soon. Bye-bye.